Okay, so we want to talk about the Soldier Field concert, and yes. you went to this, and, and I'm going to share the photograph that you shared with me, which is really an amazing picture. Yeah, I love, that's, that was from near the end of the concert. Right, and, and what it's showing is that Soldier Field was entirely filled, and oh, I, yes. I gather, how rainy was it that night? Oh, the first night it didn't rain at all. What was so beautiful is that it, it was rainy all day until like an hour before the concert, mm -hmm. and then the rain went away, and it stayed away the rest of the night. Oh, really? And, and there were two concerts, were there? Yeah, uh, there was one on Saturday and then one on Sunday. And the people oh. who went on Sunday, I, I, I couldn't go, but people who went on Sunday, it was rainy all day, and it was really cold. And the rain, unfortunately, did not go away. But it seems like it was such a special concert because of the weather as right. well. Like we our my night was the winter concert because it was so cold. And then yeah. their night was the rain edition. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what Nam Jun RM said. <laughs> right. I presume you were t taken up by this, this feeling of togetherness with this group so much it i've never i have i've i've never felt that sense of community with that large amount of people i for one thing i've never been with that amount of people before right while also feeling like such a lightness and such a a positive like positive healing healing feeling um because as a as a highly sensitive person and kind of like empath like most of the time when i'm by with a lot of people i feel overwhelmed mm -hmm. i feel everyone's emotions and it's not a pleasant feeling for me um I'm, I'm working on it to like so i don't get so affected but most of the time it's too much but i i was fine mm -hmm. i did not feel threatened or like overwhelmed instead i felt lifted up and like buoyed and just like buoyed sorry buoyed and just really loved and and what i what was so i was just telling my friend today i said what i think was so special was yes i felt their love for me and every single one of us but more than anything i also felt a deep love for myself mm -hmm. which is really hard to feel <laughs> like to, to actually genuinely like I felt the love I it's like it went both ways they that I love them they love me and I love me and that mm -hmm. was beautiful and like when I tried to tell my friend earlier today I just I sobbed because it was just so special but what I thought was so interesting is that I I thought that me seeing them in person, even though I, mean, I was kind of far, but I could still kind of see them. I thought that maybe stereotypically I might cry just to like at how like, oh, wow, it's real. It's actually happening. And, and uh, some of the songs that they like microcosmos, the song they ended with that song has made me cry. Mm -hmm. Like every time I listen to it <laughs> because it's so touching. But when I was there and I was with them, I expected to cry, but I couldn't because I was so full of joy. Mm -hmm. There was, I could not touch any sadness because it was too happy. Like not happy is not a good word. There was too much joy that I could not, I could not feel anything but joy. Mm -hmm. My face was just like the biggest smile ever that my jaw hurt the next day. Like I, it hurt to open my mouth. I was like, ow, <laughs> because I had smiled so much. And I, it was such a celebration. Before the concert started, all the fans were singing along and using our army bombs, the light sticks, with the music videos. They weren't mm -hmm. even out yet, and we were singing along. And like we sang Epiphany with Jin on the music video and all of us were singing I'm the one I should love in this world and I was like this is so beautiful and special and then when they came out the energy that I was already feeling went up times five mm -hmm. and every like everything they did 
was that they are peak performers, just so professional. But what touched me the most is that everything that I thought they were, how honest and sincere I thought they were, they are. Mm -hmm. When I saw them in person, everything was true. There was no like, I was not surprised negatively at all. Instead, they seemed even more sincere than mm -hmm. I thought they were. Incredible, that's great. It, it, was, it was so beautiful. And, and do you agree with me that they're teaching people about psychology without uh, really doing it? Oh, yes. I mean, it's, without doing it in the traditional yeah, way. Yeah, they're not teaching. doing it explicitly, but their, their lyrics and their interviews and like what Namjoon sometimes says in interviews because he, or, or in his behind the scenes when he gives like um, behind this, he gives like a, a log about like the making of the album. He will talk about his philosophical ideas that have driven the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, when they talk about those topics, I mean, the fans listen and then they think about them. And then they go and they, they, look up, they look up resources for themselves to try to understand what he's saying. Because like everything they say, like I totally understand and it makes sense to me. But if I was in a different place in my development, it would have been like, wow, groundbreaking. Like, what is that? And, and also, even when Love Yourself first came out, I didn't quite get it because I didn't love myself at that time. I was like, uh, uh, how do I put that into practice? Like I didn't understand, or it seemed, it didn't seem as deep to me because in, in America, there was also kind of a message coming out. People's like, you should love yourself, but they didn't even know what that meant. While BTS managed to use love yourself and extend the myth, like ex if you didn't understand Love Yourself with just the first album, which it was hard to, you understood Love Yourself once Tear came out. Then you went back and looked at her and went, oh my. And then Answer comes out and you're like, the message is fully there. Mm -hmm. it, it took all three albums for the message to come through. Okay, at least so me. the order was Love Yourself, then Tear. Oh, it's Love Yourself. So each one of them has Love Yourself in the title. But the okay. first one is Her. Love Yourself, Her. Mm -hmm. Then the second album was Love Yourself, Tear. Mm -hmm. And then the third album is Love Yourself, Answer, which puts all the tracks of the first one together and then adds like six new tracks. Uh -huh. And in between Her <laughs> and Tear, they had a short film that was called Love Yourself, Wonder, mm -hmm. which had the preview of Euphoria, the song Euphoria, which comes in on Answer. Mm -hmm. And now that all, all three albums came out, the, the outro, the last track on Love Yourself, Her, gives the an tells you the names of the next four albums. The chorus says, um, and everyone, like everyone wonders about the answer and I call her my, I call her, I call, I call it her because she's my tear. It was like, that's, those are all the album names. They had already planned it, obviously. One thing that's beautiful about, also about BTS is like, they're, they, they planned things out like two or three years before. And even in the, the BTS cipher four, the fourth cipher in the end of Wings, there, the chorus goes like, haters, you should love yourself. I, I love myself. I love myself, which is exactly what they end with an answer. Mm -hmm. Like, hater, you should love yourself because I know who I am and I love who I am. And like, that was, that was in 2016, before, two years before. And there is, there are translations of like fan cafe posts that Namjoon has made in 2015, where he talks about, I am thinking about how the relationship of love and how I should love, how we should love ourselves before we can love someone else. He was already contemplating all of the ideas that they put down in music all the way back in like 14 and 15. Mm. So his thoughts are very fully formed before, they, before he ever writes lyrics. Mm -hmm. to then mm -hmm. make the music. And well, I it's think amazing stuff, I'll tell you. I'm I'm just blown away by it personally.
Yeah, I think that's why it can touch someone because it's so it's so well thought about. Nothing is every single every single aspect of of the out of the creative output that BTS puts out music music videos the music itself and then the solo like playlist that the members make those tie in because they have the thoughts and ideas of of like Namjoon and Yoongi and 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 Hosok Hosok Hobi like they they put their personal selves in that and then they are also part of creating BTS's output and it reflects and connects mm -hmm. and everything they put out is so well thought out and detailed mm -hmm. and they they strive for perfection in perfection in efficiency of communication right like right. not that the message is perfect but that it is delivered perfectly and right. that that makes it so effective that's uh, th that's an impressive thing, and of course, I'm I'm just a beginner. <laughs> on, on we BTS. love to help. <laughs> Pardon? Army Army love to help. <laughs> new New armies were like here. Look at right. this. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and uh, they certainly have, including you, of course. But you know, just to see what they've accomplished now, when you when you look at this it's just undeniable and i know tomorrow night they're going to tomorrow they're going to be on two television programs one at 7 a.m and one at late night and in between then they're going to do a concert in central park and so they're very busy boys right now and the central park concert is going to be amazing because yeah. people it's a free concert so people are coming from all over to try to get into it a very special event i i i'm gonna watch it on i'm gonna because it'll be streamed live you know come on it on good morning america at 7 a.m i will definitely watch it i'm so i'm so curious to see how they how they adapt their concert into a two-hour program because their concert is like three hours mm -hmm. like this this one the love yourself speak yourself tour that's like three hours and that's i've i've seen the stage for central park like where they're gonna do it and it's it's a lot smaller than what they're used to so they're gonna have to adapt things i'm so interested to see what they do but anything any performance they do will be amazing and they're going to be doing these songs amazing if, if if people will you know get over their biases and there's a little there's a lot of xenophobia still um in america but if they if they listen and they're listen with an open mind and then they look up the lyrics, they are going to be blown away and they will, I think it will really inspire change. Yes. It will really I, inspire change. I, I have every reason to believe that that's true. BTS promotes empathy above all else. Empathy for your, they, they, they help people create a connection to the, to themselves. And when people can empathize with themselves, then they can empathize with everyone else. Okay, so that that explains to me why or how they could do a concert and also be on these two programs, one at the beginning yeah. of the day and one at the end. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, they're going to do this early morning concert. Yes. And, oh, my heaven. And heaven. then they're going to have an interview and I guess a perform, like, they're going to perform too, but it's also an interview with Colbert. And Colbert just keeps mentioning that it's the Ed Sullivan Theater where the Beatles were, they're, and that there's like a surprise of some sort. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it's historic. It's mm -hmm. definitely historic. And the, I think in, in a way, the, the uh, analogy they're making with BTS and the Beatles, I think it's appropriate in that the mark that they're making on the music industry is going to be as big and as long as the Beatles. Like mm -hmm. the power of the indelible mark they're making on the world and world culture. Yes. Certainly on the, on the younger generations. For sure. This, yeah. is, this is my generation's Beatles. Yeah. yeah. But right. I think the message the message they are and also the fans the fans 
and the, the whole culture between the fans and the artists, that's completely different. And BTS is completely new. Mm -hmm. This is completely new. Yeah. The only, I think the only analogy should be made with the power of the, the mark. Right. The, the influence. Yeah. Well, it's, it. it's very obvious that they're using new technologies that are going to, that are making connections that are way bigger than what the Beatles could do. I mean, oh, yeah. um, I don't think I ever saw a Beatles concert. I, I saw a few Stones concerts, a couple of them anyway, but I obviously have seen the the documentaries and I was in Japan when the Be Beatles first launched so we were hearing the music and the especially the women in my generation were going crazy over this music and you know and I, I know and you know lots of BTS fans are women and mm -hmm. My just just on my own uh, YouTube channel, uh, my YouTube channel used to be ninety four percent man men, but as of April first, it flipped to be seventy five percent women. That's <laughs> awesome! I love it. And that's a, that's an amazing thing to me. And and so and I, I love the fact that women are getting exposed more to Jungian psychology because of it. And, you know, so I'm trying to promote that as much as I possibly can to show these connections that they've made. They've made the connections, they made them before this current album. And, you know, my, you know, there's a guess that they're going to do an album on the shadow. I think so. They, they put so many clues in the first in intro persona, right. the intro persona music video, they have it listed like it had persona, shadow, ego, and right underneath it, it has dream, love, and happiness. So uh -huh. it's like those themes are going to be connected. And in the Boy With Love music video, they, there's a scene where it has all the different names of albums, mm -hmm. of all of BTS albums, and it, it shows S-H-A, only S-H-A, as like an up near the front and cut off. Mm -hmm. And that's not an album. They don't have any album now that's mm -hmm. called shadow or anything that would start with SHA and it's a hint already right. in the music video it's coming <laughs> right and and so it's it's persona shadow ego and then what was dream something dream love and happiness are dream love and happiness Terrific. yeah those are those are the other the words on the board um, yeah our, armies armies know that in bts there are clues in everything Right. Everything is meaningful. Right. So in a way, that's often, that's also like our dreams, our dreams and visions, you know, everything has like a meaning of mm -hmm. some sort. And we, it's special to us, but BTS is also has taken that messaging, that connection that it, it gives you things to think about because, because everything is, is thought about it. Not just, it's nothing in a, like a, nothing in a music video is put in just because because it looks cool. No, <laughs> it's put in because it has a deeper meaning. Right, right, That's, right. That makes it so that fans can engage on it in many different levels. Because you will have fans that are not as far along in the process of understanding life or themselves. And they're like, it's pretty, you know, or it's like, oh, that's, that's a great pop song. You know, people will listen to it and think that's a great summer love time song. And we listen to it and we go, it is a it's talking to us or like, yeah, it's a great rap song, but it's talking about understanding who you are and like understanding your persona and like, look, it's giving clues for like the next things. And he's talking about his shadow. Ooh, what about the shadow? What's my shadow? You know, and then you start talking about those things and I see. Okay. And engage with it on so many different levels. Well, I'm glad I'm very glad I, I talked to you because I was going to set my record on my TV to record Good Morning America tomorrow, but all the more necessary because <laughs> you, you say it's going to be a two hour concert at that. Yep. Yep. 7 show. to 9 a.m. Record wow, it. <laughs> that's huge. That's huge. I know. Also, speaking of live, like live stream and stuff, their, their Wembley concert, right. the Wembley Stadium Tour, they're going to live stream that on, on this app called Live, which is a Korean celebrity live stream app. Mm -hmm. And you just have to pay a little bit to get like 
the V Live Plus subscription, but then everyone around the world can watch the stadium concert in Wembley, which wow. is, I that's going to be so powerful. Uh, it's just amazing. And when you talked about how the like the how BTS is using technology to connect with fans like never before, that right. is so very true. Um, I wanted to mention that in the concert. We have these light sticks, the army bombs. Mm -hmm. They connect, we, there's an app for it where we connect our army bomb via Bluetooth to our seat, to the lighting system. So we put our army bomb on concert mode and they control our lights wow. and it changes color with the lighting. So talk about participation, each army we have an individual light representing us and we are participating. We make the light show. If we weren't there, it wouldn't be as epic as it that, is. That's the, that's the experience side, right? That's what, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm talking about also on the, this religious issue where, where religion is traditionally belief based on logos, based on words, yeah. you know, argument. You, you know, you have to believe this way. Yeah. And, and this, this is yeah. different. And this is different. This is the experience. This is the complete opposite. And I also, I, yes. that reminded me of in Love, Love, Love Myself, Answer. That's the last track. Or the answer, Love Myself. That's the last track on Love Yourself, Answer. In the chorus, I think it's so important that, so, like, because I think Namjoon probably wrote the lyrics. And he says that, like, I found that I need to love myself. Maybe this isn't the answer but it is an answer for me. And the way that I love myself is gonna be different than the way that you love yourself, but we have to, he, he's like, they, they say, this is the answer for me, mm -hmm. for me, and maybe it is for you, but I'm gonna share it with you. And it, they're not saying you need to believe this, you have to follow this, you have to, if you don't agree with it, something's wrong with you. No, it's, it's, it's from that point of perspective, a very like right side and experience. Like I've experienced this, what do you experience? And the whole point of the love yourself, speak yourself to her, which is related to his speech that you, you, you've talked about and you really enjoy. And he, t I, I love that speech. And it's become even more and more appropriate. And I understand it so much more as, as like, as Map of, your, Map of the Soul came out. I was like, oh, this makes even more sense. But he's, he was saying that we have to, we, when we speak, it's like, it's like your individual voice matters. You have yes. to speak your story so that then you can hear it back to yourself and then agree and then decide, is this the story I want to be telling? Right. And that is, he, in such a poetic way, he talked about the entire process of individuation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you look at your story, look at, go back to the beginning. I think it's so beautiful. BTS before Map of Your Soul, Map of the Soul Persona, they went back in their discography and they had armies go back in their, the whole, like the whole journey of BTS. With the Armypedia event where they put all of these clues all over the world and asked armies to find a memory attached to each day to mark their journey with BTS for their entire career. That symbolizes the same sort of going back to the beginning of your life that you need to, in order to understand everything. And in order to understand your life and then move forward, you have to look, go back to the beginning and review it. And their song, Jamais Vu, in mm -hmm. um, The Map of the Soul, that's yeah. talking about be, having an experience that you've done before, but feels like you've never encountered. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's kind of, that, I feel like that's what they're doing for this whole album. It's like, yes, they're doing it again. Or they they looked at boy boy in boy with love. They took boy in love and it's like and look at that experience of of love and say now that I've grown, what does that look like? Yeah. Well, my God, move forward. You you know of course that Murray Stein has issued a new book that's explicitly about uh, this connection between his earlier book and and BTS. Yes, which I want to read. 
I need to get it and I need to read it. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's another bestseller for Mary. <laughs> I'm sure he's surprised yeah. but pleased. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He probably sold a couple hundred copies before BTS got a hold of it. So it's uh, Yeah. I mean he, he dedicated it to BTS and I was like this is so so touching. Yeah, it is. So it, it really is. It really is. It's it's great. Tell me again. How do I how do I get the V V Live uh, app so that I can watch the Wembley con concert? Um. Uh, do you have an iPhone? Or yeah, a sure. Android. Okay, if you have an iPhone, go to the App Store, mm -hmm. and there's it's called V Live, and you just type it in, and you mm -hmm. can the the app is free. Yeah. And then in the app, after you have an account, then you can say, like, I want to get the BT, like, you find BTS channel, because there's different channels for the different celebrities. Mm -hmm. BTS has a channel, and you'll enjoy it, because, like, if you want to get to know the guys as people more, they have so many videos that they, of themselves in interviews, and it's all been subtitled by fans, mm -hmm. and then they also have, like, a like a comedy, like a series, kind of like a like a variety show called Run BTS. It's really fun, hilarious, and they are like on episode like in the forty six or something or some they, or fifth. I don't know. It's been going on for several years now, wow. and um, all of that is on there. And if you buy a subscription, then you get the behind the scenes content and all these things. And there's some ads on the app about the Wembley concert, so you can like probably click it I, th I don't think you can they said that it, like it would be open for you to start purchasing that pretty soon like maybe even tomorrow or something mm -hmm. or maybe May 20th or, or so but um, yeah it's it's when you're in the app it's it's easier to find figure it out I, I want to do that also for my sister so that she can we can watch it together be do, you, do you know what the date and the time is for it the Wembley concert is in June, like June sixth or something like that. I need okay. to look it up for sure. Yeah, but I think it's, not, I, it's not this month. It's in, it's in June. Yeah, I think I actually have the schedule here. So let me just look. Um, oh, I should probably just look oh, yeah. on my shirt. <laughs> I, I have it here. Uh, Wembley, London, June first and second. Oh, okay. I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. first and second, a little earlier. Okay, yeah. so it's uh, June 1st, 7.30 p.m. British Standard Time. So here it's going to be 2.30 in the afternoon. Well, isn't that nice? That's good. Great time. And, uh, <laughs> and let me just double check that. Yes, London is five hours ahead. So 7.30 at night in Wembley is going to be 2.30 in the afternoon here. And it's the first, and you don't know which one. Well, let's see. I'd have to look on the app to see which, like, which one's being. Oh, okay. The V Live. Here, here it says, um, the June first, seven thirty p.m. British Standard Time is the Wembley Stadium V Live. Yeah. Okay. And oh wow! I looked up. I looked up. Uh, I'm on V Live, and I was wrong about um, Run BTS. They're on episode 71. Just came out today. <laughs> 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 like right. I said, many many episodes. <laughs> right. And, uh, let me just check. Korea is 13 hours ahead of us, and. But they're they're showing uh, the V Live for tomorrow at at Korean Standard Time. Just a minute, let me look at this. Okay, so for the V Live for tomorrow, it's nine p.m. Korean Standard Time, which would be eight a.m. Uh, U.S. time. Tomorrow. Oh, what what V Live tomorrow? There's, uh, there, I don't think there's anything on V Live tomorrow. Tomorrow's well, GMA. Right. I um. 
Oh, this just says Tuesday, so maybe it's every Tuesday there's a BTS episode. Of yes, this. that's what that is. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so that's what that is. And so, but the the V Live Wembley Stadium. Okay, that's great. And it's two yeah. thirty in the afternoon, so I can watch it. Cool. Yeah. So on. Um, so this is this is kind of like the BTS V Live channel. Right. And uh, like they just had the the run BTS that's like right here. Right. That just came out like six hours ago. You know, eight a.m. or right. or something. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's it has they've been running the V Live channel since they debuted, so mm -hmm. or even before. So you can see them really grow from 2013 or 12 up until now. Right, and so and fun. they're still looking like little kids, <laughs> at least to at least to me. I mean, I'm 72, so for me, they look like really like kids, but. Um, <laughs> You know, I know when I, when I was your age, I thought I was big stuff because I was a first lieutenant in the Marine Corps and I was in <laughs> Vietnam. <laughs> wow. And, and so, uh, so a lot has changed over the years. But, well, um, I'd love to follow your, your journey as you're connecting this up with the, the Jungian material. And, of course, I've put a number of videos now, about 40 videos, that are designed for BTS armies to connect up between the Jungian material and the BTS material. And I'm going to continue to do that. But I was very excited when Mertz told me about the Red Book and that connection, because that's huge, and that made the connection also with Tolkien who's obviously very popular among young people uh, because of Lord of the Rings being made into a movie years ago. And so um, I'm very excited to see these connections come together now. And so I'm actually asking you and other BTS armies to tell me, you know, send me uh, some of these connections, and we can talk about them on interviews, and uh, as I did with Merritt. You, you said you watched that interview, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, and uh, and you liked it okay, I gather. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's, what's, uh, B BTS, all, especially like Namjoon and Yoongi, um, they're very, very well read. So mm -hmm. all of the music, not even just like this map of the soul, but Wings, Wings is tied to um, Damien Hess's. Mm -hmm. Damien, or, no, yeah. Hess is Damien, right. and um, and that's and, and connected like, to Jung too, you know. Yes, and the one the one who walked from Omela, the one who walked away from Omelas, the ones yes. who. I haven't I haven't read those books yet, but, and then there's like the Art of Loving, and they have like this whole like there's a whole like BTS library of books that they've read, that then their music is based in those ideas. Right. Um, so that that also encourages their fans to then read those books for themselves right. to, and promotes more discussion and and what i know is that if if they convince the girls the men will follow <laughs> Woo. but I, I i don't know if you've seen some of these videos you probably have but there's a couple of videos on youtube of of very manly guys being shown BTS for the first time and so it's it's not showing what they're looking at on the screen but it's just showing them their yeah. face as yeah. as uh, they see it for the first time and it, it's just it's hilarious <laughs> it's I actually love, hilarious I love watching it what's what's also so great about BTS and then also I think K-pop in general, which there's a lot of people who then say, no, K-pop and BTS are different. And it's like, yes, I agree. But BTS took K-pop and made it better, <laughs> in my opinion. They used the medium and then made it their own. And the medium and the culture of, of South Korea and also some other Asian countries, I think that that culture promotes a healthy, more of a blending between the, the genders 
in comparison to like the stark, stark difference that has that exists in Western culture. Mm-hmm. That and the like all the masculine energy can only go to the men and all the feminine energy can only go to the women and none the twain shall meet. You cannot have men cannot cry and women cannot be leaders. And like it just kinda goes like this. And with at least at least with the male male K pop groups, they're allowed to wear things that in according in Western fashion would seem way too feminine. Or like they have a make makeup or they are allowed to be affectionate. They're allowed to cry. They're allowed to love their friends and like give them hugs and like hold their hand if they're crying. Like, yeah, because their their friends and that sort of thing that kind of like when, when a westerner who has no experience with it with it whatsoever like those those manly men you say they watch bts or they see something they, they watch a music video and they're just like it like breaks their brain because it breaks their <laughs> it totally breaks their expectations <laughs> exactly that's the um the one I particularly oh liked God. was was this bearded fellow, and he says, uh, "My left brain doesn't know what to do with it. It's like <laughs> empty. There's nothing there." Yeah. And and yeah. and yeah. you know, Dr. Young talked about compensations and the fact that in the psyche we have opposites, and we've gone so far out on the on the rationalistic left brain stuff that we've lost track of the right brain and and so we're we lost our souls basically because our souls are really in the in the right brain and bts is talking to our souls their music talks to it while also staying very grounded in logic i think like because it is so well read and it's based on deep philosophers and everything like there you cannot say that like they're just being idealist and crazy you know like you right. can't just like write it off as like not being educated because it's extremely educated right so then it it calls us it, it well we need a balance because you have to uh, balance it as, as i was saying earlier everything that you can see behind me here is a product of some sort and those products have to be put together a hundred percent and that's a purely logos thing but there's nothing in this picture that's alive nothing and and it it's it's not anything except except a space holder uh, unless you unless you put life into it and that's what comes from the right brain and that's what we've lost Okay, by by making everything logos oriented, uh, we've lost track. I mean, I I frequently pull out my black copy of the Bible and I say, you know, this is just a black doorstop unless you put life into it, yeah. right? And and so, you know, when you think of Notre Dame as an example. Um, it isn't the structure of the building that means something to me enough that I would sob when I see it burning. Um, But then I realized a week later that everything that I loved about Notre Dame is still there. It's not gone at all. But it's, it's in my heart. It isn't in a structure in Paris, France. Yeah. And and you need you need both, and that's what a lot of people have lost. A lot of men have lost it, and and we need to somehow get it back. And we have to learn how to live an authentic life. I often talk about uh, football fans or sports fans of any kind, and the only people that are actually having an authentic experience there are the guys that are on the field <laughs> or on the ice wherever. I've, thought of, I've definitely thought of that it's like this is kind of it's kind of strange like, well i mean it, it's okay as entertainment okay as yeah. long as you know it's entertainment then yeah. okay we all need inter- entertainment we all need to suck our thumbs sometimes and so we need to recharge right yeah and, and so as long as you understand it's entertainment that's fine but you can't think 
that you're doing anything if you're a spectator or if yeah. you're you're watching, right? Yeah. The only people that are having an authentic experience are the people that uh, make the movies or are actually on the field um, playing the sports, except when you have something like this. And I'll one more time put it up here. When you have something yeah. like this, when every, just, everybody's just involved in it, you yeah. know, when everybody's involved in it, then you have a, an actual experience that everyone's yeah. had. It, it's not only entertainment, but it also connects up with, um, with the actual experience of the concert, which, yeah. you know, you couldn't possibly describe it, and neither could anyone else that was at that stadium on that night, because it, it's a unique experience. And um, May I say, as a, as a uh, class, classically trained musician um, also, you know, I have gone to thousands and thousands and thousands of concerts, mm -hmm. but never a concert like that because that was not a concert where you just go and you hear. This was a, it truly <coughs> was an experience because I've, I was so used to like, you go, you show up for like an orchestra performance or like a solo performance, you go and you sit and you sit quietly and you don't make any noise and you try not to disturb them as you watch what they do and enjoy very like as if it's on a screen right. and then you you clap at the appropriate time right. and it doesn't matter if like the first movement was so awesome and you would like to applaud because you liked it nope 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 not allowed you have to wait to the end and it's very authentic. <laughs> it's super inauthentic it's not it's I, it was so hard to like actually connect your heart to it right while the bts concert you were encouraged to like just you just react like just react and and scream and and love basically your screaming was like loving on them you're showing your approval if you're quiet then you're hiding yourself no you're completely encouraged and the the boys would stop would not sing some of their lyrics just to have armies fill it in like they did that often throughout the entire performance not just at the end mm -hmm. to make it they were always including the fans and they never they never took it as like here let me show you what i can do never that was never the feeling it was always like let's sing this together like right. let's do it together right. because they they wouldn't it's not the same without the fans like they're like they're not giving a show unless army is there Right. And Army and them are one. And that was that unity that really came through. I felt like I performed almost in a way, but but not not. But like my arm hurt because I like went too hard with the with the light stick, you know, going right. with them. Or like we jumped and and you look around and like everyone else is having like the time of their life, not because it's entertaining, but because they're participating. It felt right. it's almost like right. it was almost like participating in like the rituals of old but you know like where they would have dances like i was i can't i can't think of like a you know, like a village and like they have like a sacred dance or something that everyone needs to participate and it's kind of like a very numinous experience and sure this without like wanting to sound like this was like super religious or, or whatever it, it wasn't it's but i did feel like it had that sort of positive numinous energy where everyone is participating it created a community that transcended any of the divisions that normally keep us apart right and, and that it's, was a, it's was, a soulful energy but. yeah that was what was so beautiful is that in that when i was there even before the concert started i didn't feel the division that i normally feel even in america you know we're so multicultural whatever but there's often so much division because it's there's like, oh, they're this race, or oh, they're this gender, or this old. They're they're older than me. They're younger than me. Like it, no. At the concert, all of these people are army. They all love people. The the seven boys that I love, and they love their music, and I love them too. So why don't we love each other as well? So that feeling was there the entire time. Like I loved seeing all this diversity, but I didn't think about it. I just thought, hello armies. Actually, when I was driving into the city and I could see them, I was like, 
hello family hi <laughs> like i've been waiting to join with you because a lot of the time we're kind of in isolation like i talk with them via twitter but it's not like there's a ton of bts fans right around me right. because in america i mean they're the BTS army that's Amer that are U.S. you know U.S. armies sorry U.S. whatever they're live in the U.S. and you're an army um, yeah we're probably a few million but there's 300 million people so we're kind of spread out yeah so, it's not it's they they haven't been well known up till now but I right. I think that it's, it's becoming you know, with, more and more mainstream right now the SNL has happened now the Billboard Award is the top group in the world is award has happened and now they're going to do the Central Park thing tomorrow um, it's tomorrow right yeah tomorrow yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and so. Uh, a lot more Americans are going to know about this going yeah. forward, and a lot of people are going to have, you know, their their uh, recorders Expect going on their television. Yeah, yeah. And, and expectations uh, will be shattered. What? Right. Uh, and I think, like, with all this popularity, um, BTS is never like they're never cra they they don't crave to be in this spotlight in this way, to like have this fame, the way that America will give it to them, mm -hmm. give them this like notoriety or whatever. Like if they, <clears throat> everything from now on, it's like past what they ever dreamed they could achieve. Mm -hmm. So now everything else is just like, I don't know, icing on the cake. What, what they want is just to connect to people and connect to armies. Well, so uh, yeah. They're well, doing it. <laughs> I know, but, but like, Yes, more and more Americans will watch them, but that doesn't mean that they're going to get, they're not going to get the message right away. All we can do is hope that the people that will see them will then go, wow, what is this? And then they will go and they will dig further. And then Precisely. when they dig further, they will be just like I was and they will interact with other, they will, inter they will find some armies who will be kind to them. We're always called the nicest community on the internet. You know, they will find some armies who are kind to them and show them about them, about BTS, and then they will start their journey and hopefully start their journey of self-discovery. Yeah. That's all I hope. Like that's what I want. So yes, they're getting more and more popular, but I'm not I'm not I'm not happy. I'm not like, oh, I'm so glad that like, yay, now all these people are recognizing them. Like I yeah, I'm happy about that. But what I'm more happy about and more excited for is that is the shift that could happen in our collective psyche because of their music because precisely of their it is happening and there's no doubt about it I, you know it's i can see it everywhere and you know just the energy in in this conversation with you is tremendous and and uh, that can't help but r rub off that you know, <laughs> it's going to <laughs> yeah. i i feel so deeply that the biggest issue in america I mean, yeah, you can like this whole big long list of things, but the deepest, deepest issue that's the root of all things is a lack of empathy and yeah. a lack of knowledge of yourself, of yeah. the self. Well, I'm so glad we had this conversation today because I, I you know, I wasn't seeing the cent Central Park concert. I knew that there was going to be one and I wasn't seeing it on this schedule that I have oh, yeah. on my <laughs> iPhone, and I'm saying, where's the Central Park concert? <laughs> now, you've connected up with with me that that concert is going to be between 7 and 9 tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And good I go, morning, oh America. my, good morning, America, wake up. <laughs> wake up and smell the BTS. <laughs> right, and so that's on ABC, right? The, uh, the, yeah, I think it's yes. ABC. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> like, what is it on? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and and so I'm gonna I'm gonna go set my television right now so that okay. I, so that I make sure I have the I have the recording. But uh, I, I think I'll send out a t few tweets too, saying, "Wake up, America! This central concert, <laughs> this Central Park concert, is going to be at 7 a.m. tomorrow." <laughs> yeah, don't miss it. <laughs> yeah, don't miss it. <laughs> Because I, I hadn't realized that I was expecting it was going to be in the evening. So, uh, 
so now I have to really pay attention. And I'm so glad to know about the the Wembley concert too, because that'll yeah. be very interesting. Yeah. And uh, so exciting stuff, very exciting. Yeah. So Eliza, thank you very much for uh, talking to me about this. I hope I've given you a, a connection between your music and BTS now by mm -hmm. by showing you about uh, Unwoman and Erica Mulkey. I, uh, I knew I always I knew that, that like that is that is something that I can do and I've I've been uh, I haven't stopped playing. I've actually the whole reason I was able to pay for my schooling for my um, teaching search certification is because I was doing orchestra gigs. Yeah. I paid for it all using orchestra gigs and. Um, like for the future, I'm kind of just looking like a year or so in ahead, uh, a year ahead or so with with like what my career is going to look like. But I music is such an important part of my life, even if I'm not making it with the cello, like I'm constantly singing and I'm constantly listening and I I see colors when I when I listen and I also am an artist as well and I, I can draw really well so I would like to um, you know do something with that connect that with the music